This video contains spoilers for the Sonic the Hedgehog movie, so please don't be a sucker and then complain to me about it. What's crack -a my fellow home dogs? It's your old pal Channel Pup, and I just got back from seeing the Sonic the Hedgehog movie at midday on a Saturday. So yeah, there were kids in the theater making guttural noises and just spewing stuff everywhere. And they're just gross kids, aren't they? Let's just admit that. That's why I don't make content for them, aside from the whole copper thing. But don't anybody ever try and tell me again that Sonic is for adults. I did have a nice little moment in there when the previews were going up. They had the trailer for Team Sonic Racing, and the kids in the theater were like, whoa, Team Sonic Racing is like, that's the next generation right there. Sonic is still relevant. But now onto the actual film itself. The film is by design a playing it safe, tropey family film. And you'd be pretty naive to expect anything outside of that little box. The thing is, I don't hate these tropey family films. They can be done really well. I mean, Who Framed Roger Rabbit was kind of the beginning of that whole animated characters come to our world shtick. I don't really like Space Jam as much as everybody else does, but I thought Looney Tunes Back in Action was a blast. Heck, I even had fun with Rocky and Bullwinkle. And fortunately, Sonic the Hedgehog is closer to the Roger Rabbit and Looney Tunes Back in Action end of the spectrum than it is the Smurfs and Garfield the movie end of the spectrum. I'm not saying that Sonic is as good as Roger Rabbit, nowhere near, but it's definitely pretty far up in that upper half of these sort of obligatory family films where the animated characters come to our world. Not even sure if I should count Roger Rabbit to be honest because, I mean, it was experimental at that time. Amazing how something so ballsy has become so safe now. But yeah, as I say, Sonic is tropey and it's safe and it's formulaic. Destined to be average at best or mediocre or whatever, you would think anyway. What ends up being fortunate is that you can tell that the people involved in the making of this film, Jeff Fowler, Tim Miller, and everybody else on board clearly have a love of the source material. The enthusiasm of everybody involved in this project really, really, really comes across. You can feel that a huge amount of effort has been put into getting Sonic himself right in this film. I mean, anyone that's been following the behind the scenes drama will know already that, like, they went and redid the entire film just to get Sonic right. And I'm not gonna keep bringing that up in this review because, like, we're past that now. It's a great thing that Paramount stepped back from the edge of the cliff for this movie, and we should just, you know, be happy about that now. So this Sonic is not really the Sonic that players of the Sonic the Hedgehog series necessarily are familiar with. This is very much a reintroduction to a different version of Sonic. Sonic in the video games has always been this hyperactive, too cool for school kind of guy that is kind of the spirit of adventure. He'll never admit to any kind of defeat, has zero sense of insecurity, and doesn't really display much emotion either. Sonic in this film has weaknesses, and weaknesses he's willing to admit to, which is sort of like a, whoa, okay, that, that's quite a drastic departure from what we know. He's kind of a refugee on planet Earth because his own world, well, there's people after his power and it's kind of a life or death situation. He's found a way to make it his home, but he's, he's got to lay low and he spent the past approximately 10 years not talking to anybody but himself. As far as he's concerned, his friends and family are those that he watches and observes, but never ever interferes or interacts with. So for all of his goofball comedy shtick, Sonic is still someone that you can kind of sympathize with in this movie. And a level of logic is really applied to Sonic's sort of lore, I guess you could call it. Like, we've got the distinction between Sonic's planet and our own planet, the rules that Sonic is supposed to follow in accordance to traversing these different worlds, how he gets there, and that being the rings, how his powers work, where he gets his red sneakers. And what we are seeing here is very much a prelude to the Sonic the Hedgehog video game series. Now, the thing I was kind of worried about is that the film kind of felt like it could potentially be very obligatory, like you've got your obligatory human surrogate characters and we're gonna have to spend some time with them and learning their phoned in story with these phoned in actors, performances, and like we gotta find some way to care about these human beings. We're leaving the magical world of Sonic that we're familiar with and entering our normal boring human world, which Sonic as a character does not belong in. But what if I told you that a little bit of thought has actually been put into this. That these human characters very much feel in the spirit of Sonic himself, 
and that the human world actually plays a really good role in this and has an atmosphere. No, Sonic's not just going to New York City because, hey, it's New York, you know, it's good in movies. We instead spend most of the film in a small town called Green Hills in Montana, and this town has a character of its own in a way. Tom Wachowski is our human surrogate character, and he's the sheriff of this small town where nothing ever happens and there's no crime, so they don't even need really a police force or anything, or at least not a competent one. And Tom Wachowski's whole goal, his whole motivation is he wants to save a life. He wants to be doing bigger things than what he's doing right now. Again, it's pretty cliche, pretty predictable, but it works. And that's partly because of his interactions with his wife, Maddie Wachowski, who's a veterinarian and she's very supportive of him and his wish to move to the police department of San Francisco so he can do some bigger work. And she's got some witty comedic dialogue as well. She also has a sister who lives in San Francisco and she doesn't approve of Tom at all. And she's got a daughter called Jojo. And Jojo's a bit friendlier, a bit more level-headed, and she likes Sonic and they both kind of share like a little childlike moment. There is also Crazy Carl, who's this old conspiracy theorist that believes in like the blue devil of Green Hills. And also Agent Stone, who is the assistant to Dr. Robotnik. And he's kind of this sort of government agent type that kind of operates as a mouthpiece for Robotnik. And he's also pretty abused by Dr. Robotnik as well, physically and verbally. So like, to be fair, outside of Sonic and Dr. Robotnik, who are our familiar characters from the series, this film's own cast of characters are actually really enjoyable and entertaining to be in the presence of in their own right. And they're all pretty nicely fleshed out. Obviously the most fleshed out one of them is Tom Wachowski as he is the one that accompanies Sonic for most of this adventure. And Sonic and Tom's plot lines kind of converge when the two meet. Sonic stumbles into his garage and he shoots him with a tranquilizer dart believing he's another raccoon getting into his trash. This causes Sonic to accidentally open a ring portal to San Francisco where he accidentally drops his bag of other rings. Now he's stuck in Green Hills, Montana and Tom Wachowski is the only one who can help him get to San Francisco. But after Sonic's speed causes a mass power outage, they now have government mercenary Dr. Robotnik on their tails. <laughs> get it? Because Sonic has a tail? Yeah, no, I don't find it funny either. Stupid. And speaking of which, the comedy in this film. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest, at no point did I really laugh out loud at any of this. Other people in the theatre were laughing, kids in the theatre were laughing, but it's, it's very much safe play family comedy comedy, I guess, and that's fine. There's, there's nothing offensively unfunny in there. I was quite surprised by how little cringe moments were in this. Like, I think there's only three out of push. But like, as far as comedy goes, Sonic has been funnier. Like, in the Sonic Boom TV series, it's much more satirical, and it's a, it's a lot funnier. It's more my humor anyway, I guess. But that is okay, because the film doesn't really live and die by its comedy. It lives and dies more by its story and characters. A lot of kids in the audience were really laughing at Jim Carrey's take on Dr. Robotnik, which I guess we'll talk about now. Jim Carrey is doing 90s Jim Carrey in this film. He's, he's channeling all that zany goofiness. But I was actually a little bit surprised by the direction that they took with this version of Dr. Robotnik. I kind of went into this assuming, yeah, it's just gonna be Jim Carrey playing 90s Jim Carrey. It's gonna be full of zany, over-the-top, gurning at the camera comedy. And that's kind of applied, I guess, but Dr. Robotnik was a lot more menacing than I was expecting in this film. Which is actually a positive thing, because when I saw that second trailer, and I saw Dr. Robotnik dancing to Blitzkrieg Bop, and he's screaming, oh, give me a big fat break and stuff. I, I, I wasn't laughing, and I got the feeling I was supposed to be like, ah, ha, ha, look, he's dancing. That's really funny. Oh, look at him verbally abusing that general because he's so much more intelligent than him. That is so fucking funny, isn't it? Ha, 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 ha. Hoof. Fortunately, they really played up the whole condescending angle in this film. He finds himself really clever and witty, but it's not really there to make us shoot milk out of our nose as such. We're just there to really, you know, exemplify Dr. Robotnik's sense of condescending, holier-than-thou intelligence. And to be fair, Robotnik does live up to it. Like, the guy does not quit. It feels more like Jim Carrey is using his signature sort of blend of 90s Jim Carrey but in service of a really nefarious, moustache-twirling villain that just refuses to quit. Another thing that's a bit of a departure with this version of Dr. Robotnik, though, 
is that he's proactively chasing after Sonic and Tom. It's him who has the upper hand in all this. He's not like he is in the games where it's like, mm, I'm gonna do an evil scheme. Wait, what? Sonic is here? Oh no, oh gosh, I'm gonna get defeated now. His goal in this film is to catch Sonic and get revenge on Tom Wachowski because getting punched in the face by him really hurt his ego. So that's the whole thing with Dr. Robotnik. He's this condescending, abusive man-child with a fragile ego and a lot of intelligence and talent. Which makes out arguably the most fleshed out, but also most sort of self-aware version of Robotnik that we've ever had. Which was a surprise to me, because I was just expecting Jim Carrey to be playing Jim Carrey. So it warrants the drastic design departure for most of the film as well. I gotta be honest, I actually really loved Dr. Robotnik's dynamic with Tom. I actually feel like their rivalry was just as engaging as the Sonic versus Robotnik rivalry. And it all really comes together for me when Dr. Robotnik is saying to Tom, like, you know, why would you throw your life away for this stupid alien? And Tom just responds by saying, look, this alien here knows more about humanity than you ever could. And this is the point where Tom sort of announces his friendship with Sonic, which is enough to sort of get Sonic back up into the fight, where Sonic delivers the finishing blow to Dr. Robotnik and pushes him to another planet, leading to the formation of the Dr. Robotnik from the video games that we know and love with the big moustache and the bald head. It is that cheesy, it's the power of friendship stuff, but it's a Sonic the Hedgehog movie, you know, what will you expect? As I say, you'd be an idiot to expect anything else. But I thought Sonic and Dr. Robotnik were really, really, really well fleshed out characters, and so were the village people of Green Hills, and it all culminates in a really satisfying conclusion. And one little unexpected expected thing was some of the imagery in this film was really cool. There is this shot and it's in the trailer where Dr. Robotnik pulls down his goggles and you can just see the reflection of this really angry, electrified, powered up Sonic. But like, that's still a really cool moment of cinematography and just this this moment where like the Eggmobile arrives in Green Hills and it's just slowly coming out of this ring and you just got this low down shot just showing it just coming out of that ring and all the village people preparing for a fight. It's just, it's a really cool cinematic moment and it's just a lot better than you'd expect it to be. In terms of how Sonic's powers are used, a lot is borrowed from the recent X-Men films with Evan Peters' Quicksilver. There's a lot of this bullet time slowdown stuff where you've got all this music playing, and I do think that is kind of in direct reference. I think, like, they're not trying to pass this off as their own brand new thing. But, like, I really loved that in the X-Men movies, and I loved it here. I think the extent of its use was in the bar fight scene, which I've seen a number of people kind of didn't really like, but I had a lot of fun with that. I think they got really creative with Sonic's personality in that scene and kind of utilized the speed in a bit of a different way to what we kind of have seen before in the film. I mean, that's also the extent of Sonic's wit that we see in that scene as well. In that first act, Sonic is very insecure. In the bar fight, he's more the Sonic we know where he's kind of sassing people and he's kind of too cool for school and he's super overconfident. That's that's the Sonic we know and love. And in that third act, he's he's getting angry. He's, he's, getting, he's getting pissed. So in terms of the usage of Sonic's powers, it's not particularly original, but then again, it doesn't need to be, you know? It's, it's not gonna break any new ground because to be fair, it's already been done. Right, now I said there were approximately about three cringe moments in this film out of push. And the reason I say out of push is because there's two moments in the film where Sonic does the floss dance which everyone associates with Fortnite. Now, this, I'm not going to be melodramatic about this or anything, like, it was to be expected. It's a film that's kind of catering towards families, and kids, kids, kids love this dance for some reason. Like, in of itself, it doesn't feel forced or anything, it's very quick, it's pretty inoffensive, it's just kind of like, everyone is doing it right now, and like, it was so inevitable that when it showed up, it was like, yup, there it is, there we go. But if it wasn't for that, it would just be, it would just be this harmless little dance in the film, I'm not going to be melodramatic about it. But there was this moment after the bar fight where they're in the hotel, Tell where Sonic does a bit of a he does a little toot. He does he does a little far, a little toot toot Sonic Warrior. And it's not like it's excessive or anything, but it's just like, oh no, Sonic doesn't have an anus. He can't do that. I mean, okay, the film does actually answer the question, does Sonic have an anus? Because there, there is a moment in the film where like Tom is like, is is that is that your people? Are they coming? Because I don't want to get probed. And Sonic's like, you're telling me I'm not even wearing pants. So yeah, there's your question answered. Sonic does have an anus. Still no word on a retractable penis though, so maybe we'll get that in the sequel. And I really do hope a sequel is definitely on the cards because we get that after credits with Tails and we get the after sort of beginning credits with Dr. Robotnik. And like, I'm looking forward to seeing where that goes. I love what they do with Sonic and Robotnik in this film. So I would love to see what they do with Tails in the next one and hopefully possibly Knuckles. So overall, I'm very, very happy with this film. Like, considering what this film was most likely to be, 
but what it ended up being. It didn't end up just being average or just okay. It ended up being, like, good. Like, really, really good. You've got a lot of love for these characters, and they're really well fleshed out, and the action sequences are great. The performances are all really good across the board. It's got a lot of creativity. It's a lot of fun. So while I'm not going to go ahead and say, oh, it's excellent, it's a masterpiece, it's fantastic, it's perfect, I'll say it's great, which is high praise for you know, a video game movie. Especially one that's had the amount of shit thrown at it that this did. And for that, I am very, very happy with this. Also, side note, this is the best version of the characters of Sonic and Dr. Robotnik we've ever had. If you disagree, then your mother didn't love you. What do you guys think? Comment below and discuss, and as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more like it, why don't you head over to channelpup.net, where we've got a blog page called Dr. Blogtopus, but as well as that, you can also buy merch, such as this awful t-shirt. But if you want to be a part of the super fun kennel club why not hit subscribe hit the like button and in the description below you can check out the links to my patron and my twitter i think that would be pretty sweet for both of us what do you say champ but in all seriousness now thank you so much for watching my fellow home dogs have a great day because you and i both know you've earned it i'll catch you next time that's a cute outfit did your husband give it to you because you could get a way better costume from Zentai Zone. Check out their range of custom-made, tailored superhero costumes. Ridiculously good quality, value, and customization. Link is in the description below, as well as my coupon code channel pup, where you can get a discount off of your purchase. And while you're at it, why not get your suit designed by my talented buddy Dan from New Blood Dan's Workshop? You can contact him via the link in the description below. Seriously, guys, you do not want to miss out on your chance to be your favorite superhero and feel authentic and professional. And you don't want to miss out on that Channel Pup discount.